Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on an introduction to the Game Launcher Creator. Now the Game Launcher Creator is a software which allows you to design and develop your very own game launchers for your games that you've created. Uh, there's a lot of people um, that use a wide variety of different softwares such as uh, Unity and Unreal, uh, RPG Maker, Construct, Click Team Fusion 2.5, uh, doesn't matter what game engine or, or authoring tool that you've used, um, they're all going to be compatible with uh, this software. Uh, now what does this software enable you to e exactly do? Well I'm going to go over that in this video tutorial for you. Uh, so straight away when you launch the uh, Game Launcher Creator software you'll be presented with the project dialog uh, and this is where you can choose um, from a pre-made template so you can for example choose the default skin uh, or any of the accompanying um, templates that come with the software uh, now if you had to load one of these up um, so for example if we had to choose uh, the epic game template uh, what you would do is in here you would type in the name of your project um, so let's do this as an example right now so let's say that we're going to create a game uh, we've created a game and it's called space rebels so we've selected our template there, Epic Game, and we can just simply select New Project. And GLC will create the project using that template. So let's have a quick look around at what we've got. Uh, this is the main window. Here you can see a preview of our launcher. This is a real-time preview. It's got its own window, so you can move that about. Uh, the reason why it's got its own window and it's not implemented in the background here is because some users are using laptops or lower resolutions so it's good to have the ability to move uh, the actual launcher window around uh, to fit your needs i'm running 1080p here uh, so i don't really have an issue uh, with resolution and size uh, but if you're using a laptop that's using a lower resolution uh, then you might have a few issues so uh, it's quite handy to have that there like that up here we have the objects um, toolbar um, and here we can iterate through all the objects that we've got uh, on our launcher here uh, and on the right hand side here you can see uh, this is the properties uh, dialog uh, and this is where all the properties for the uh, launcher um, are contained and we can modify all those as well and on the left hand side here we have our menu um, so here down here is the uh, game launcher create a toolbar so we can return to projects i.e. close this project down uh, we can go to website we can check for updates to the software uh, go straight to online support and exit the uh, software itself up here we have um, specific menu for your launcher here uh, so for example if I wanted to insert a new object I click on insert objects and the properties dialog changes to insert an object and this allows me to now insert a new object I'll go through those in a second with you uh, object properties you can't select this uh, that's there for when you actually select uh, an item that's already um, inside your launcher so for example if you click on a button uh, then you can see that this is highlighted now and it's displaying the properties of that button in the uh, what else have we got? Uh, the built-in updater as well, we'll go through that again, uh, but when we select it over here we get up the properties for our uh, updater and then finally we have our build launcher here. So let's just return and go over a few of these basic properties. So the first thing that we come across is some of the basics, uh, window title, that's what's displayed um, as your uh, title for your launcher. Uh, we can choose to display the minimize and close buttons here. If we uncheck that um, and click apply, then you'll notice that they disappear. Uh, so we'll just put them back on. Uh, we can also change the color of uh, the min minimize and close buttons just by selecting that color tab there. Uh, we can choose the uh, dimensions or the size of the window for this. So for example, if we wanted to make it 1280 by 720, we can simply type that in and click apply and you can see straight away uh, that we now have a 1280 by 720 um, window but that's not what we want that's not what we want right now so let's go back down i think it was 800 by 480 for that template as you can see it uh, takes your background image and stretches it out to the size of the window so uh, if you just bear that in mind for when you're developing um, or designing your graphics to ready to import. Uh, we can choose here a background color or an image. So if I uncheck this, 
you'll see now that we're using um, a background. Uh, we can also have gradient effect. So we can choose two colors to do gradients uh, or we can uncheck uh, vertical and have it as a horizontal gradient. Uh, but we can simply flick back to our background at any time, just like that. Uh, background music, we can import some background music if we'd like. Uh, there isn't one specific to this template, uh, but you can always import your own. Uh, and then you also have the option as to whether to loop the background music or do you just want it to play as a one shot. Uh, we also have a, a splash screen for a launcher, um, always handy. Uh, the first thing that loads uh, when you when your player opens your game launcher is a loading screen. Uh, this is usually only on for a couple of seconds, um, but again, you can include a splash screen in there if you'd like to. Now, um, when you modify any of these properties uh, up here, like so, uh, you must remember that you have to click apply, otherwise um, if you uh, change something in here and go somewhere else, it's not going to save it. Uh, there is a reason for that. Uh, the reason for that is because of too many read and write requests to the hard drive. Uh, sometimes it can cause a few problems. So I just wanted uh, users to ensure that they were happy with uh, the settings that they'd done and then clicked apply. The last thing you will ever want to do um, is make uh, an accidental modification to something, whether it's a file name or uh, size or something. Uh, and then you flick to something else and it's automatically saved it. Uh, right, okay, so what have we got? What else have we got here? Um, the properties. So if uh, this, for example, is a button, this is a game updates button, as you can see here, we've got three um, three images for it. So you've got the standard up, so when it's just um, standalone and the mouse isn't hovering over it. You've got an image for the hover, so it'll change to this image when you hover over it. Uh, and the same for the click. When the user clicks on the button, uh, you can give it a, a different image as well. Uh, the button action, you can choose down here what to actually stipulate uh, that this button does. Uh, as you can see, the template has already preset that that button checks for updates. Um, but you can choose to launch or execute uh, a game that resides in the same folder um, as the game launcher. Uh, you can tell it to go to a web page or you can tell it to exit a launcher as well as check for updates. Uh, this box here is for uh, specifying uh, which web page to go to or which game or app to execute and uh, it must reside in the same folder so if it's game.exe then you could just type in game.exe uh, and the launcher will launch that. You also have a few uh, additional options down here like do we want to close the launcher upon the action so for example you might want to keep your launcher running in the background while the game's running so you can just uncheck this uh, and it will keep the launcher running but if you wish for your launcher to close when the user launches the game then you would select that uh, and down here we've got a uh, choice of the x and y coordinate of the button and also the layer as well layers are very important there's three layers to uh, your game launcher uh, you've got layer one layer two and layer three this enables you to layer things so for example you could have uh, some background stuff on layer one um, some mid ground stuff on layer two and then some foreground stuff on layer three it just enables you to uh, create some nice cool effects with frames and whatnot uh, in your game launchers uh, again anything that you change uh, for button properties or anything that you've selected in here it's always wise to click on update it just ensures that uh, the all the settings that you've modified get applied inside there so that's the button covered which is relatively quick and easy uh, what else have we got uh, we've got a server image which is a cloud-based image so basically the image will reside on your web server uh, and you can tell your game launcher to download that image every time the launcher um, is run which is great because if you want to create um, like for example the screenshot of the week here you can see that that is a server image uh, and this is the URL for that image um, which is good because if you want to update the screenshot of the week every week you can just simply update that image on the server uh, and the launcher will re-download that file every time the game the game launcher uh, is run and this is great because if you don't do it through uh, the cloud way that means you're going to have to hard code the image into the launcher that means every time you want to change this image you're going to have to uh, republish a new version of your launcher so rather than do that you can just have this dynamic server image here but you can just simply update the image that is stored on the server and it will get downloaded every time it's run it's quite a quick routine as well uh, there's very minimal loading times 
on um, downloading these images. Uh, I've done many, many tests, many, many tests with different uh, file types, uh, different connections, um, and different file sizes, and it's, it's relatively quick, so that's good to know. But it's always good to use JPEG if you can, uh, because obviously PNG, uh, the image format PNG and GIF, um, and bitmap obviously uh, are quite heavy files so uh, try and stick to JPEG if you can just to result in the fastest download speed um, if you ever want to deselect anything from here as you can see when we select different things um, other components fade out and that's just so you can see where you're dragging the one that you've selected so if you ever want to deselect an object you just right click anywhere inside uh, the launcher and it'll deselect everything so that's the server image. Um, I like that. It's um, it's a great feature. Uh, image is just your standard image. So if you click on image, um, you can insert an image from your computer, from your hard drive, or one that you've downloaded to your computer, um, and the launcher will bundle it in. Uh, I'm going to get to server text last because that's quite a big feature. Um, a text string uh, is pretty self-explanatory. You can pop a text string in and you can change what the string says. Uh, you can change the color, the fonts, uh, the size, and all the rest of it. Uh, we've already gone through button and video as well that's a, a nice little feature so you can insert a video so if you click on this you can insert a video straight into your game launcher uh, and again there's a few customizable options uh, on that i do want to touch on this server text because uh, it's quite important um, some people might not get it at first if you've never used a feature like this uh, but it basically enables you to uh, do server side perform server side queries um, with a script online uh, which is good because this enables you to um, get data from a web server which you can then pull in to your game launcher in real time. Like for example, if you was designing a game launcher for an online multiplayer game, um, you could set a text string uh, that every 30 seconds um, gets um, the amount of players that are playing online. So you can then display that inside your game launcher so you for example you could have um currently um currently uh 3265 players online and that two 3265 players number would come from the server um i'm probably gonna have to do a separate video tutorial on that at some point um but if you know what get um, and post for data is um, from a server you'll it's pretty self-explanatory so when you drop it in if you've already done that before you'll probably know what to do but there's a little bit of help on there as well and there'll be some documentation on the website as well for you to follow um, but yeah very very handy feature um, this has uh, quite a few different options I'm just going to click on it and put it in for you just so you can see so for example if I had to put this here you can see there are uh, post players online and post is a variable uh, so if I select this and just look at the properties here you can see we've got the standard properties like the position for the X and the Y and the size uh, and what layer it's on but then when we drop down here we can't edit this text caption and that's because we're using these here uh, so we can still change the properties such as the font font size and the color um, uh, but the server URL this is where it gets interesting so for example um, on this you could put um, your PHP file so let's quickly do that now so if i go splash test test.php this is one i wrote up earlier on and all this php file does is produce uh, a random number every time it's hit now you can see we can hit with an interval or we don't have to so what does this mean well if i deselect hit with interval then when the game launcher launches it will get the data from the server it will put it in here and it'll never do it again but if we hit it with an interval um, then every time this interval is hit, it will refresh the data that is inside there. So as you can see here, the pretext is there are, the post text is players online, uh, and then the middle, the center variable here comes from the server URL here. We'll see if we can check that out um, at the end of this video. So it's running in real time. Um, the built-in updater. This is another great feature, so you have to include the updater, otherwise it won't get included by default, because not everybody wants an updater. But if you do, uh, pretty simple configuration. Um, all you would do is put in the name of the file that you store on your web server, which contains the version number. Um, you can have it as an any file or a text file. You can have it as whatever kind of file you want. 
Uh, but basically what will happen is the game launcher will download um, the contents of this file. They will then compare it to the contents of the file that is with the game at the, at the present time. So, um, for example, if it's the first version of your game, um, inside version.txt you would have the number one. Um, and then when you release a new version and you've uploaded it, you can then put number two inside here. So then what will happen is when the game launcher checks for an update, it will check that this has got version one, but online it says version two. So straight away it will go, there's an update available. So then what you do is you point to the executable file where the update exists. The launcher will download this file to the user's computer. It will launch the file, close the launcher, um, and then apply the update. So don't forget every time that you um, do uh, an update inside your installer here, you must include the latest version of inside here. Otherwise, it's always going to continually think that there's an update available. So once you've updated it to version 2 inside your new installer, just make sure that you overwrite your local uh, text file for that. Uh, and then it's just a pretty simple uh, process just to uh, build the launcher when you, once you're done. As you can see, there's quite a bit of space around here. I left this in for additional options, which I'm going to put in in the future. But you can give your launcher a file name as well. So, for example, you could just call it Launcher. So you click on Build Launcher and Game Launcher Creator flies straight in to creating and building the Game Launcher. There you go. And once it's done, it'll pop up with where it's built to. And as you can see, it comes with a data folder with all the information in and all the files that we need. Now we can simply double click on this and run the launcher. And there we go. There is our game launcher. Uh, you can see how easy that uh, was to execute. Um, and you can see how uh, fast we did it as well. You can see where the, uh, the, the buttons work, where you do the hover. Uh, and then you, what you specified, the screenshot of the week works, as you can see there, that was a downloadable image, which is on the Bikebox media server. So you can see how fast that downloaded as well, like really fast. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. I'm going to post up some more video tutorials online um, of these uh, different features individually uh, and look at some step-by-step -step things but that's a great overview uh, as to what uh, the game launcher creator can do uh, the next video in this series is going to be how to create a game launcher from scratch so bringing it from photoshop or fireworks whatever you, it is you design your graphics in and bringing it all in and making it all work inside um, game launcher creator don't forget to check out the website uh, at all the w's dot game launcher and I'll see you at the join board.